Well, welcome. I'm Pastor Bill Thomas, pastor at Hereford Faith and Life Church, and it's my joy to be uh, uh, among all my uh, fellow servants and ministers of the gospel there. It's a great church. It's an alive church. We exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, we believe that if we lift him up, he will draw all people unto himself. Well, I'm glad you're with us uh, this morning. I love the virtual church. I love that uh, you're making that effort to, to be uh, with us in the study. And I really recommend uh, this weekend, uh, you know, have your Bible open. We're going to look at uh, probably what most theologians and, and others would agree is probably the greatest sermon ever preached. And uh, it wasn't by me for sure. Uh, but I want you to have that Bible. And the other thing is I want you to take notes. I want you to take notes because we're going to talk this morning about worry. And uh, we'll come to that in a moment. But let's start with prayer and ask God to bless our time together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and mercy and grace. And we just, again, acknowledge that you are Lord, that you are uh, the sovereign God of the universe, creator, sustainer, protector, provider. And in Jesus Christ, you do all these things for us as we put our trust and faith in him and his work on the cross that we're your children and you care for us. Lord, we pray for those who are going through tough times right now and might be chronic illness, it might be COVID. Some people are grieving over loss. Others are facing financial difficulties and family problems and problems with kids and grandchildren because of just the turmoil that this uh, life has, as this season of COVID has, has turned and, and made for all of us. Father, we put our nation in your hands. We, we ask prayers for our president and all elected officials that you might put godly advisors around them, that they would hear your word and, and follow your guidance. And Lord, we pray for a revival to break out, starting with us, that we might just grow so passionately in love with you and on fire for you that we just won't stop sharing you with others. And we thank you for that. We, we pray for uh, not only our church, but all the congregations around the world. And we pray, Lord, that you would, again, uh, give us ears to hear this morning, because so many of us struggle in this area, and we just want freedom from worry. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, as I said, we're going to talk about uh, freedom from worry. And I think that's really, really a important for us to, to really understand because <laughs> anybody worried here today? I mean, you know, uh, for more years than I would like to confess, uh, I was a chronic worrier. I mean, I, I uh, even as a young person, uh, I would spend sleepless nights worried before the big football game or worried before a test or an event. And I, I tell you, I was such a great worrier. I really had it down. And, and even today, I, uh, I still work hard. I have to work hard at not worrying. Um, I'm going to speak from experience. I went through a, a very uh, terrible time uh, back in the early 90s where worry just uh, gripped me. I needed professional help, and I'm glad I got it. Went to a Christian uh, counselor, and then finally a Christian uh, psychologist and a, a Christian psychiatrist. And, and through that work, I've learned a lot not only about me, but, but about worry in general and how we deal with this from a biblical perspective. So like I said, it, it's, it takes work. Even today, I have to work hard at it. Several times a day, I have my go-to verse. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 10 uh, through 3 through 6. And in, that, in those verses, it says, take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. Because, see, this is, this is where worry happens. It's in our thought lives. And I want to just right out front tell you that victory and freedom from worry is going to be in your thoughts. It's in your mind. It's what you allow to dwell upon uh, in your thought life. That's the very root of worry and anxiety. But the good news is, as I shared, we have the power in Christ to take every thought in captivity, it, to make it obedient to the word of God. We have the power to choose what we think about. And so I want to talk about that today. I want to explain again from experience how uh, in layman's terms, I'm not going to talk about uh, chemicals and the chemical imbalance that can happen uh, in your brain 
from chronic worry and stress and anxiety. But I, I want to just say in layman terms, this idea about thoughts, because this is really important. Uh, it's uh, called cognitive behavioral therapy, when you learn uh, new thoughts, but it's as old as the Bible. Yet you know, when we entertain certain thoughts about worry, fear, and anxiety. Uh, I like to explain it like this. Back in the old days, you don't see it much happening anymore. If you had a pet or dog and you live somewhere and you didn't want them to run rampant, you, you stretched a, a, like a zip line. Oftentimes neighbors use clotheslines and you'd hook your dog to it. And that allowed the dog to walk back and forth and back and forth. And so uh, over time, you, you get this well-worn path that the, the, this dog just, just the, the grass gets destroyed and it's just from going back and forth and back and forth. And, and this path is created. And listen, every time you and I have a thought of worry or anxiety, uh, we, we are creating a pathway. And, and, and the more we entertain those thoughts and the more we dwell on those thoughts, this, this it's just like hooking ourselves up to this clothesline. We're developing this very easy path so that when we face troubling situations or stressful situations, our thoughts automatically go down this well-worn path. And so we, we then begin making uh, mountains out of molehills. We, 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 we dwell and fixate on all the terrible, awful things that might happen, even though we know in reality, 99.9% .9 of the things we worry about don't happen. And to turn our worry into faith and trust, listen, we must take our thoughts captive in obedience to the word of God. And if we do that often enough, if we say, you know what, wait a minute, I'm going to take that worry into, into captive obedience to the word of God. I'm going to trust God. If we do that enough, Guess what happens? We create a new pathway, a, a, a new path that our thoughts will automatically go down because it's easy. And if we keep working at it, and what happens is the old pathway gets overgrown again and gets difficult to go down. So we have to take our thoughts captive. We, we need to, to really trust God and all of his promises in the word. And if we stay on that path, I tell you what, you'll have freedom from, from worry and anxiety. And I know it may sound simplistic, but listen, it's hard work. You got to work at this because you're, you're born with a natural mind that tends to worry, tends to think the worst. Romans chapter 12, verse two, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, we've lived so long in this world. We have worldly thoughts. We have those anxious thoughts. That, and, and God says, listen, you need to renew the way you think. You need to take thoughts captive. Now, is, is changing the way you worry, those worry habits, is it worth the hard work? <laughs> Absolutely, right? Absolutely, man. When, when you can live free uh, from worrying and anxiety, boy, I tell you what, it, there's, it, it, it has got two tremendous benefits. One, you will live a much more balanced and peaceful life. I guarantee it. You'll sleep at night. You'll, you'll enjoy each day. The second benefit, though, is that the Bible says that worry is sin. It's the sin of not trusting God. The Bible says we're to put all our cares, cast all your cares upon God because he cares for us. That's the found in 1 Peter. And over and over again, we're told to fear not, fear not. So listen, when we worry, that's sin. Sin separates us from God. So the benefits of not worrying, of being free from, from, from worry and anxiety are just many, many. And uh, you, I know you want that peace in your life. I want that peace for you too. So what I want to do is share three simple steps in finding freedom from worry. And these steps are all found in what many people say is the greatest sermon ever, ever preached, ever. And, but it's not mine. It's not one of mine. It's not David Jeremiah. It's not you name your favorite. The preacher was Jesus. Now, of course, everything Jesus said was, was profound. He's this, he's God in the flesh, right? But people say that the Sermon on the Mount is probably one of the best ever sermons. And, and I tell you what, it is filled with deep spiritual truths 
And we're going to find three of them that are going to help us find freedom and worry. So let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 19. We'll go to verse 34. I'm going to read this morning from the Living Bible, and that's a paraphrase, but I love the way it expresses it. So we're going to read this together, but I do want you to see it in your own Bible, and you can underline and, and mark. And if you don't think you should uh, be writing in your Bible, write in the person's Bible next to you, okay? Because you want to, every, every time you write something down, you remember it better, right? Matthew chapter 6, we're going to start with verse 19. Don't store up treasures here on earth where they can erode away or may be stolen. Store them in heaven where they will never lose their value and are safe from thieves. For if your prophets are in heaven, your heart will be there too. If your eye is pure, there will be sunshine in your soul. But if your eye is clouded with evil thoughts and desires, you're in deep spiritual darkness. And oh, how deep that darkness can be. You cannot serve two masters, God and money, for you will hate one and love the other or else the other way around. So my counsel is don't worry about things food, drink, and clothes, for you already have life and a body, and they are far more important than what to eat and wear. Look at the birds. They don't worry about what to eat. They don't need to sow or reap or store up food, for your heavenly Father feeds them, and you are far more valuable to him than they are. Underline that, please. That's important. We'll come back. Will all your worries add a single moment to your life? <laughs> of course not. And why worry about your clothes? Look at the field lilies. They don't worry about theirs, yet King Solomon in all his glory was not clothed as beautifully as they. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and gone tomorrow, won't he more surely care for you, O men of little faith? So don't worry at all. Wait a minute, let's repeat that again. So don't worry at all, underline that, about having enough food and clothing. Why be like the heathen? For they take pride in all these things and are deeply concerned about them. But your heavenly father already knows perfectly well that you need them. And he will give them to you if you give him first place in your life and live as he wants you to. So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of you tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. So listen, regardless whether you're a worry or not, I want you to take this down because, uh, you know, if you are worrying, this will be so helpful to you. If you're not, you're going to be counseling and sharing with somebody around you who's a worrier. All right. So here's the, here's the first of the three steps. Very simple, but profound. Put God first. See, most of our worries uh, come because we have our priorities out of whack. Our, our priorities are upside down and, and, and out of line. And Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things that we are so concerned and consumed about and dwell upon, all these things will be given to you. The Father will give them to us. Bottom line is, you know, God wants us to be first, wants him to be first in our life. He, he wants first place. He doesn't want second or third. He wants us to love him and, and honor him, storing up our treasures, right? Don't store them on earth. That's what Jesus preached. That's temporal. It's fleeting. Uh, store your treasures in heaven because they're eternal. And then he says, don't worry about these things. Focus on God. Focus on God. Fully yield yourself to Jesus Christ. You can't serve two masters, Jesus said. So God wants to be first in every area of our lives. And very practically, let's look at five arenas. And I'm going to use the an acronym first, all right? He, first, he, he wants to be first in our finances. This is where the rubber meets the road. You know, God doesn't need our money. God uses money and finances to show us where he fits in the scheme of our devotion. If we put God first in our finances, usually everything else falls in place. Finances, you know, is, is a way of, of showing God you're number one. Listen, let me see your checkbook. Let me see your, your I can tell you who your God is by where you spend your money, where you invest. God wants first to be in our finances. He wants first in our interests, your, your desires and your passions. The, who is it or what it you think most about? Because that's your God. What do you talk about when you're with others? That's your God. See, God wants first place. So weave him in and out of your life so that he remains first. And then he wants to be first in our relationships. 
He wants to be loved first and above all. And the thing is, when you love God first, God gives you the love to love everybody else. The closer I get to God, listen, the closer I get to my wife, the closer I get to God, the closer I am to my kids. The closer I get to God, the closer I am to the people I serve. Because that's how it works. We put God first. He gives us the love so that we might love others. He wants to be first in our schedules. Wow, you know, that we need to make time for God. You know, it's funny how we end up giving God the leftovers of our time so often. I, I just have the one promising thing, the, the one glittering jewel out of this COVID experience for me is to get back into that routine of putting God first in my schedule. First thing I do every morning now is to spend that time with God. And I always talk about it. I did, I, I, it comes, comes and goes, but COVID has freed up that, that kind of time for me where I just know it's so important. I want to encourage you, put God first. Put God first. There was a, a cross point my wife did years ago, and we used to have it here. I think it's, I don't know where it is now, but it used to say, a day first hemmed in with prayer is least likely to unravel. Hem your day in with prayer first. Meet with God first. Put him first in your schedule. And that includes uh, Sabbath. That includes worship, Sunday worship. One of the things COVID has done is I think a lot of people discovered, hey, I've got a new day. It's called Sunday. I can go online and watch uh, church anytime I want to. But listen, that, that, that's not the purpose. God gave us Sunday as a resurrection day, a day of celebration, a day of rest, a day of family, and a day of worship. And so please, you got to keep that schedule. T, this is, a, this is interesting. God wants to be first in our troubles. You know, when troubles come, we often run from God. And it's exactly the opposite of what we should do. We should run to God. We should go to him. He will help us in these troubles. We don't ignore him, just run to him. <coughs> Excuse me. So make sure you have these down and we'll go to the second step. Let me get a drink. <coughs> Thank you. All right, so here's the second step. Obey. Obey God. You know, obedience is so important to God. God says, <coughs> Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. And I think it's really important that as we walk in obedience to God, I have found that my worry and anxiety dissipates when I know that I'm walking with my Lord obeying him, living with a purpose, living with meaning. This is what it says in, in, in Jesus' sermon, verse 33, and God will give them to you if you put them first in your life and live the way he wants you to. Live the way he wants you to. That's obedience. Psalm 1, God says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in the season, whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. So obedience, that is so important. Now let's use the word obey as an acronym. Look at some specifics. The first thing is observe and keep the known will of God. This is really important, folks. Sometimes worry and anxiety can paralyze us. I mean, you literally feel like you can't do anything. We pull in to ourselves. We, we wrap ourselves in our anxious thoughts and our worries. Instead, listen, just obey what God has already told us to do. Observe. Know what God has shown us. What is God? What's the known will of God in our life? Well, we know that we should love one another. We know that we should uh, forgive one another. We know that we should worship. We should pray. We should just keep putting one foot in front of the other by faith. That's really, really important. You might not know why uh, God is allowing you to go through a season of worry and distress, and you don't have to know why, but you do have to keep the known will of God because that will keep you moving forward and not be paralyzed not be isolated. The second is be righteous. That is, per, keep pursuing holiness. Worry oftentimes 
causes us to sin. That worrying itself is a sin. But in our worry, people often turn to sinful ways to self-medicate, right? Uh, get drunk, get high, uh, get on Amazon and buy everything you can think of just to forget for a moment the pain that's going on in your thought life. And But what happens? You, you, you do get some immediate relief. Then you sober up. Then you come down. Then you get the, your bill, your discover bill. And you think, oh my gosh, it, your worries, anxieties multiply. So live righteously, be righteous. E, examine your heart and life. This is really important. David prayed, oh, search me, oh God, and try my heart and see if there be any wicked way in me. Listen, if we're living in known sin, you've got a reason to worry, right? So repent, just stop, repent, ask God's forgiveness, and God will forgive you. If you're hiding sin in your life, or you're running from God's call in your life. How could you not worry? We need to be in the center of God's will, right? So just give it up. Stop sinning. Get a new life in Jesus Christ. Fulfill your destiny in God. Don't fall to uh, self-medicate it yourself. Don't, don't do that. Now, sometimes in therapy and counseling, you do need medication that will calm the the anxiousness, so you can begin to work on these things. But I'm talking about self-medication with pills and, and, and drinking and, and drugs and, and, and overeating and buying, you know, just this impulse buying. Those are all ways of self-medicating. So examine your heart. Stay clean before God. Why? Listen, this is important. Yield to the flow of the Holy Spirit in your life. Listen, he's our comforter and he's our guide. He'll teach us to trust in the Lord. He'll guide us in the word of God. We'll lean on the Lord, not our own understanding. So we can have peace. You know, we don't know the future. We, 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 we begin uh, picturing this, all these terrible things, but, but we don't know the future, but God does. So we can rest in his loving arms, leaving it to God. I've got a question for you. I want you to think about it for a moment. Did Jesus ever worry? Think about that for a moment. Can you picture Jesus worried? Remember when the disciples are out in the, in the boat with Jesus in this awful, awful storm, life-threatening storm uh, flows over the, the sea, and the disciples are just panicked. And most of them were, were uh, seasoned fishermen. And uh, they knew this was a deadly storm, and they are just holding on and screaming for their lives. And, and, and uh, can you picture Jesus standing with him, screaming at the top of his lungs, oh, my God, we're going to die, we're going to die? <laughs> Absolutely not. Where was Jesus? Jesus was in the boat sleeping, not a care in the world. He knew his life was in God's hands. This is a, this is me. So you got the picture of the disciples panicked for their lives. They're fearful, worrying, anxious. And there's Jesus sleeping and he's in the same boat. He's in the same storm, but he trusts God. He trusts the Holy Spirit and that same Holy Spirit that gave peace and power to Jesus life in the midst of a terrible storm dwells in you dwells in every born-again believer, the same Holy Spirit who will speak in the storms of your life. Be still and trust God. And we can know peace and freedom from worry. Isn't that great? Here's step three. Trust God daily for your needs. In the sermon Jesus preached here, he puts worriers into two categories, right? Men of little faith and heathens who don't know God. I don't want to be in either one of those categories, do you? A person of little faith or a heathen? See, most of our worries focus on a fear of lacking what we need to live. A fear of lack, lack of finances, a lack of shelter, lack of career, lack of sustenance, a, a, a lack uh, uh, in 
career and job. Listen, whatever it is, uh, and especially today, wow, with, with COVID, you, you have people legitimately worried about their, their lives and their income. And inflation now is chipping away at everybody's retirement portfolios and, and grocery budgets and house payments and car payments and rent and bills and mortgages. Look, Jesus taught us to pray, didn't he? Give us this day our daily bread. What God is saying is, listen, don't worry about tomorrow. I will meet your needs today as you need them. And we say, well, what about tomorrow? He says, don't worry about tomorrow. Live for today. I have your tomorrow covered if you put me first. You remember in the Old Testament, one of the names that God revealed himself to share with us what his character is, is Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. Jehovah is the Latin Yahweh, the, the uh, very sacred name of God that faithful Jews would not even speak. Yahweh Jireh. Jireh means provider. I am God, your provider. God promises that if we trust him, he'll meet our daily needs. And God has never, ever broken a, a, a promise. So how do we trust? How, how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, let's use the word trust, all right? T, take control, your control of your life, and give it to God. That is, <laughs> yeah, that means take your hands off the steering wheel, man. Let him drive. Get out of the driver's seat, right? It, 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 you know, quit playing God. That, that's the essence of it. Let go and give it to God. Quit playing God. We're not God. Because listen, if you want to run your life your way, worry will be your traveling companion. If you want to fly your own life, listen, your co-pilot will be worry. Your first mate will be anxiety. <laughs> Jesus said in this sermon, heathens worry because they're concerned about such things. He's talking about these things that we, we need. He says, but you, my children, you don't need to worry about those things because I will provide them for you. You know, an important part of giving up control, because that's, that's a hard thing to do, give up control of your life, is giving up uh, what I love, what Joyce Myers calls stinking thinking, right? Instead of thinking all these negative thoughts, we need to turn our thoughts to God and his faithful promises to us, his word. Stop going down those dog paths, those rabbit trails of your old way of thinking. Be renewed in your mind. Counselors and psychologists use the term catastrophizing when working with chronic worriers. Catastrophizing is blowing situations out of proportion. It's making mountains out of mohills. It's, it's, it's taking something rather insignificant and making it much bigger and larger than it is. I found a freckle on my arm. I, I don't think I've ever seen it before. I know I've got skin cancer. Next thing you know, you're Googling up skin cancers and you're looking at all the treatments. You're seeing all the awful things that can happen. And, or, or how about this one, parents? Your, your, your kid is late coming home with the car. And instead of just saying, well, you know, Lord, I just put uh, Mary in your hands. I know you'll keep her safe and I, I'm just going to trust you and, and, and relaxing. You know, we begin, we begin thinking, oh my gosh, she's in an accident. She's probably in some ER somewhere. I don't even know it. She's probably hooked up to a ventilator. I just, I, and I don't know that. Or, or, or maybe uh, she was uh, carjacked somewhere, you know, and now she's held hostage by these criminals. Or maybe she was abducted by hostile aliens, you know, whatever. We think the worst. And it goes over and over in our minds until we are a mess, like jello of worry and anxiety. I'm just going to be blunt here. Don't do that. You can take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. God has given you and me this power. Trust God. Trust God. R, recognize your extreme worth and value to God. Oh, this comes over and over in this sermon. It's so great. He tells us, Jesus tells us we are far more valuable 
than the sparrows or the flowers that God cares for so faithfully, so wonderfully. You are valuable and precious to God. You need to, to, if you're with other people, turn and stop right now and look and just say, look, you're valuable to God. You're so precious to God. You are. We need to recognize, folks, we were bought at a great price. We were bought with the the precious blood of Jesus Christ, God's only son. God's not going to abandon us then. God's not going to let us down. God's not going to break his promise. We are valuable. And even when we're not faithful, God says, I will always remain faithful because he loves us so much. Nothing can snatch us out of his hands. And then closely connected that is understand who you are in Christ. In Christ Jesus, listen, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. You're a recipient of all the promises of God. There's probably some 6,000 promises. You are the recipient of all him, of all of his blessings. You know, the Bible says that, that our father in heaven owns all the cattle on the hills, all the gold and silver is his, all the, the precious gems are all his. It's all at God's disposal to give us in our times of needs. And God just desires so much to give you what he has because we're his kids. You're his son or his daughter. So, and he's generous. And he promised to meet all our needs through Jesus Christ. So understand who you are and how precious you are. S stands for serving others. You know, it's really amazing how our worries disappear when we get our eyes off of our problems and start helping people with their problems, reaching out and touching people. It is funny how, uh, you know, I've just learned over the years that no matter what I'm going through, there are always people around me who are going through far worse. How many of you discovered that truth in your life? Sure. So take your eyes off yourself. God will take care of you. Start being the hands and feet of Christ and helping people around you. Guess what? You don't have time then to concentrate and all that negative stuff. You don't have time to do stinking thinking. And you have, you're, you're focused on someone else's needs and you're praying, oh God, help me help this person. And it just takes on a new, new uh, energy in your life. And you feel that comfort. That's why God counts it. Listen to his word. It says, count it all joy when we face troubles and trials. Why? Because God will move on our behalf. He'll bring comfort. Then God says, with the comfort we've been comforted with, we're to comfort others. In other words, God takes our pain and turns it into a ministry to others. Jesus says this in his sermon, verse 34, don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrows too. Live one day at a time. Trust God daily. Give us this day our daily bread. And then finally, T, is talk and testify. You know, one of the areas that counselors and, and psychologists work on, psychiatrists with, with chronic worriers, is what's called self-talk. And we all do it. We all have running conversations, and we either talk uh, about ourselves or we are having this running conversation about what's going on in our life. We say things like this, uh, I'll never make it, uh, it's impossible, I'm doomed, it's over for me, uh, I'm such a failure, I'm a loser, I'll never measure up to real this, I'm going to die. We say all these things, and, and it, listen, instead of this negative self-talk, speak words of life to yourself, and speak words of life to others, words of encouragement, speak the word of God. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who makes me strong. Nothing is impossible to God. I will never leave you or forsake you. I'm a new creation, a child of God, a brother and sister to Christ. See, this is really important. See the difference with just the words that we speak or even our self-talk that no one hears. We can change our orientation from worry to peace, to comfort to hope and trust. And here's another truth that, 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 that God used to tell me, you know, if we try hard enough, we can always find something to be thankful about. I think that's true. We, we speak words of thanksgiving. We think that we praise God. We, we worship and we sing worship songs. That's talking. And then here's the second part, testify. Testify is simply sharing with others 
In other words, not just talking to yourself. Now you're sharing with others the good things that God is doing in your life. That's called testifying. You, you just simply share about God's faithfulness to you in this time of need. So if you, if you want a break from worrying, share with somebody how God is moving in your life. Share with somebody. Testify. Share Jesus with somebody. You will be amazed how hard it is to worry when you're telling others about the life-changing uh, power that comes when you know Jesus in your heart. Keep God first, obey him, and trust him daily for your needs. Now, here's the deal. Here's, here's, here's the tough part. Now that you know these things, or just because you listened, and maybe you, you wrote them down somewhere, you heard the message, doesn't mean that worry will lose its grip on your soul, right? See, worry will lose its grip when we put these things into practice, when we become doers of his word and not just hearers. And it won't come immediately. I, I doubt it. Maybe a mir miracle will happen. I hope so. But usually it takes a lot of work to renew our minds. It took us many years to dig this, this make this pathway uh, for our thoughts to follow. Listen, give God time to renew that, to make a new pathway in God's word. But it'll take a partnership. God has done his part in Jesus Christ. He's given us his word. He's given us his Holy Spirit for power and comfort and courage. Now we have to be the disciplined ones to take all our thoughts captive and do these things that we've shared today. Trusting God. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 19. Turn your Bible there because this is powerful. It starts right out with this command. Don't worry about anything. Say that with me. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all that he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. And his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Here we go. Look, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all that you've learned and received from me, everything you've heard me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Give it to God. Walk out these steps. First, obey, trust. As you're praying these things into your life, listen, here's what it boils down to, folks. You, you have a choice. Every day you have a choice. Moment by moment, you have a choice. You can choose to worry or you can choose to live in God's peace. A peace that quiets our hearts, that quiets our thoughts. And we can choose to obey God's peace if we'll put them first in our lives, if we'll obey him, if we'll trust him daily with our needs. So let's start today. Let's start right now as we ask God to free us from worry. As I said, he's done his part in Jesus Christ, and we can commit to do our part. So let's do that right now as we close. Heavenly Father, we put into your loving hands now all the needs that we, we think about, all the worries that consume our thoughts, the anxiety we have. And we just, we, God, we lift them to you. We, we, we extend them to you. Come, Holy Spirit, begin to flow in a powerful way and bring peace like a river. And Lord, remind us, we start going down that old trail of, of, of negative thoughts, of of worth, worrying thoughts and anxious thoughts. Help us remember we can take our thoughts obedient to Christ. It's to say, whoa, stop mine. Thoughts, you have to obey Christ. I'm not going to think that way anymore. Instead, I'm going to think godly thoughts. I'm going to think the word of God. I'm going to say the word of God over and over to me. Again, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm a child of God. I'm an heir.
to your uh, eternal blessings. That I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. That the Lord is my rock, my protector, my shelter in the storm. Holy Spirit, there are some people right now who are so anxious. It's that they just, this is almost too good to believe. Would you just speak, be still and calm those thoughts and allow the renewing of their mind. Fill them with your thoughts, Holy Spirit, with the word of God, with truth. Help us, Lord, live in the freedom that Jesus Christ purchased when he died on the cross. For he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And Lord, we claim that we are free from the prison of worry and anxiety. We're free in Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. I would love to hear some uh, testimonies. Uh, you know, part of it is talk and testify. Share what God has done in this message, how, how he set you free from worry and anxiety. It will really help others in this fight to find that peace. It's, it's God's. He's provided for us. We have to renew our minds and latch hold of it and hang on to it, right? The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen and amen. God bless you and have a great week in Jesus.